Sorry, how much market share did Bitcoin grab last week? Dear prescient crypto asset investors, in case your favorite media outlet has failed to make it eminently clear to you last week, Canada lost 17,000 jobs in May. In defiance of established lending incumbents in the IMF and the World Bank, El Salvador moved forward to secure $1 billion in commitments to fund its 431 megawatt volcano energy powered Bitcoin mining facility. And despite all the regulatory swagger this week, BTC and ETH futures funding rates remain bullish as heck. Not too shabby. Welcome to the recap where we bring you the most important and interesting crypto news tidbits of the week. For those of you who have perhaps understandably been a little too chicken to check out the price of Bitcoin this last week in light of all the regulatory crackdowns, let us put your mind at ease. BTC ended the week down 4.4%. There's carnage and then there's carnage. And if you're listening to this, you no doubt have a pretty good understanding of what carnage looks like. This ain't it. Considering the global dumpster fire that 2023 is turning out to be, frankly, we think that 4.4% down on the week is eh, not that bad. It's not that bad. Case in point, Bitcoin dominance, which is a percentage of Bitcoin's value relative to the total crypto asset market cap, broke out of its two-year range over the weekend to retest the nice round even number of 50% total market share. That's up 3% compared to 47% last week. Back on April 15th, 2023, the CBC reported that, let's read this, shall we? Bank failures haven't happened often in Canada. The Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation, CDIC, which insures deposits in Canadian banks, last handled one in the mid 90s, and the Crown Corporation has dealt with only 43 such incidents since it was established in 1967. End quote. Only. 43. So since just under 98% of those incidents occurred between 30 years ago and the CDIC's incorporation in 1967, and given the continued stress in the banking sector, specifically this week in another deemed globally systemically important bank, GSIB, by the FSB, Financial Stability Board, ironically headquartered in the same country whose central bank just made available a $10 billion line of credit to backstop UBS, the poster child GSIB, that the Canadian economy lost 17,000 jobs in May, that Canada now looms tall as the nation with the highest consumer debt to GDP ratio of any G8 nation, and that the Canadian dollar has lost on average 400% of its value relative to real estate over the last 40 years. Is it any surprise, we ask you, that hard monies like Bitcoin are showing themselves to be so relatively resilient? We think you can guess what our answer to that question would be. Not financial advice. Check out the weekly recap at ndax.io forward slash blog for links to any of the articles, stories, and of course, data to back up the bold claims made above. Start your free account at ndax.io today.